Well, you don't need me to tell you what sort of weekend we've had here. A miserable one, of course, for football spectators and for footballers too. Our main match, Spurs against Everton, was postponed, but we've still got three First Division games involving London clubs. First of all, Southampton against Crystal Palace. Fisher. Bit far in, and just over the bar by Johnny Jackson. The decisive goal from Ipswich against West Ham. On a brilliant save from Jeff Hurst. And Liverpool against Arsenal. Good cross. Evans! Hunt! Barnett stops it. All that and plenty more besides. In your letters we see a really wonderful goal by the great Garincha of Brazil. And all five from the 1966 World Cup final and an exciting sequence of goals from World Cup and European Cup games played in the last few days. In fact, it's goals all the way today on the big match. So, draw a little closer to that fire, and we'll start with that vital game at the foot of the first division, Southampton against Crystal Palace. The pictures come from Southern Television, and we join commentator Simon Smith right at the kickoff. Referee John Gar of Swansea gets them underway with Palace kicking off. And both teams wearing a black armband this afternoon uh, in respect of the vice chairman and ex-president of the Southampton club, Mr. Cosgrove, who died yesterday. Now, it's Southampton immediately on the attack and points pressures to both these sides this afternoon. Payne taking it out there, but taking the throw in himself. And that was Dawkins stepping in there for Crystal Palace and breaking up that move right in the box. Chased there by Fisher. Palace, who brought off a, a great win against the Wolves last week, desperately needing points, third from the bottom of the table, and Southampton uh, one point worse off. That's out of play. It's a throw-in. Throw to the Palace, taken by David Payne, who passed the fitness test this morning. Been in doubt until a couple of hours before the game. There's Kemba. Right across the goal there, that one. Kemba got that across well. Young Len Tompkins, number 11, not quite enough speed to get onto that, to latch onto it, but a good attempt by Kemba. piece of jugglery there by Huey Fisher. Throw for Palace. Kemba taking it quickly. It's with Hind now. Shannon must have felt the impact of that one. Now Kemba playing it off short. Putting Dawkins away. Playing it a bit close there the Palace. Payne rescuing Southampton. Awkward ball, beat Gabriel on the bounce. Now it's Payne again, the boy who passed the fitness test just a couple of hours ago. So the Palace are unchanged from the team that beat Wolves last week. Here's Fisher. Shannon taming that ball rather well. It's a long one out to Sydenham. Good ball. Johnny Sydenham, the England under 23 international, gets a corner. Corner kick off David Payne. Characteristic turn of speed there by young Johnny Sydenham. Here he comes to take this corner kick for Southampton. The header from Davies. Jackson was equal to it and he was fouled. John Jackson. Palace goalkeeper who succeeded Bill Glazier. And the free kick to Crystal Palace. Just about halfway inside Saints half of the field. Dawkins with this free. And a great header there from Kemba. 
young Steve Kemba putting Palace in the lead after a matter of a dozen minutes or so. Well, that's a setback for Southampton. Well taken goal there by 20-year-old Steve Kemba. Well, we'll see if that'll sting Saints into something better. Kemba slipped through there rather easily. Bought the Saints defence really wide open. Sitting and waiting for this one, waiting for the short one, but clearly not getting it. Davis could only play this one back. Channon, Fisher. And the Saints now converging in on that Palace goal as Payne nips away. If it can keep this in, it's a good one. But Jackson is there. Jackson's goal kick well taken care of by Byrne. But these Saints rather easily beaten him on the ball. But Fisher now. Payne. Phil Hoadley. Hoadley for once getting caught. Sydenham wanting it. Byrne running through, but it comes through to Sydenham. Fisher, kick far in, and just over the bar by Johnny Jackson. Corner kick to the Saints. Sydenham, this corner. And it from Gabriel. Oh, and slammed over the crossbar there by Terry Payne. Well, it was one of these efforts where you get it in or you don't. It's a first-timer. Very difficult feat to attempt. And this one went the wrong way. So, goal kick to the Palace. Davis again with the head to Fisher. Davis. Welsh International looking for someone all the time to play it off with him so he can streak through and get the return. This one's dangerous. And it's headed over the bar by Sewell. Corner. Just as well for the Palace that their skipper, Johnny Sewell, was right on the spot there. Well, someone in the crowd wanted to win the ball there, it seems. But anyway, all is well. Payne with the corner kick. McGrath up there, right on the edge of the box. It breaks to Queen. Referee right there adjudicates it a free for the Palace. Young Hoadley taking it quickly. Kemba. Looking for Davis again, but McCormick covering him well. This is Sewell. Sydenham, Gabriel, again that dummy in this time, it sold it well. Davis turning that back for Shannon. The idea was good. Fisher. Going to squaring this across for McGrath to complete the clearance.
Canada right on the edge of the box, seeing half a chance to nip away there. But it's a free kick. Back to Martin. Gabriel doing well to get the head to that one. Sydenham's pass though, a drift. Palace, it's pain now. Certainly very nippy to the ball, as Crystal Palace side. Sydenham. Having, having a traipse right across field. At least he's got them deploying back into their area. Short return from Payne to Sydenham. Looking for Davis, the head of Davis. There it is, if Gabriel can take it, it couldn't. There goes McGrath. And offside flag. So a free kick for Crystal Palace. With just about half a dozen minutes left of the first half. Palace holding on to this goal scored for them by their outside right Steve Kemba. Jerry Queen, number nine. Tompkins trying to bustle it through. Saint throw. Jimmy Gabriel to take it. Sydney losing his feet there for a second. Getting the ball back to Gabriel. Sydenham now. Shannon's run out to his left, but he squares it off to Fisher. Shannon. Gabriel. That's it. That's it. Jimmy Gabriel. There he is. Great piece of opportunism there. Lobbed this one over and gave Jackson no chance at all. Quick thinking there by Jimmy Gabriel and a fine equaliser for Southampton. Two now for Palace. Dawkins. All covered by a Kirk up. Ball's gone over the line for a goal kick. Kirk up, well taken care of young Len Tompkins there. Goal kick for Southampton and Eric Martin, the Perth born goalkeeper. Davis finally getting to it. Boy having trouble to keep this from McGrath. Payne going in after it. And winning a free kick. Taken too quickly. Fisher trying to take advantage there while they were still arguing the toss by slamming this one through. Coming as the closing seconds of the first half now, unless any injury time is added. Very few stoppages so far in this game. Here's Sydenham. It's dangerous. Look at the attempt. That was a curling ball there from John Sydenham. So a goal kick for John Jackson, who took over between the sticks for Glazier when he was transferred to Coventry and has been playing very well. There it is, half-time. 
before Jackson can get in his goal kick. It's half time with the scores level. Southampton one, Crystal Palace one. Here we go to the second half. Saints kicking off. Level, one goal apiece. And a very creditable game these two teams putting up on this going this afternoon, which is a bit hard on top, but although the ground's in pretty good condition considering the shape of the rest of the country. Way offside there. Kirk up to Martin. Dawkins, one well underneath that one. Mike Shannon, back in the touch. Both of Saints, Payne trying to find Shannon. Another attempt. He ran the wrong way this time. So young Hoadley, Phil Hoadley, 17 year old, clears it up until McGrath gets ahead there. And that's as cool as should be on this particular afternoon. Saints throw. And in fact, a free kick. Payne must have been shoved there. Shannon. Shannon. I don't know whether that one's allowed. He slipped it underneath neatly enough, but no, it's not. It, it scrubbed out that one. Well, Shannon, who got two goals last week, thought he'd done it again there, no doubt, but shoving. Oh, McCormick to help Jackson's goal kick out. Young Tompkins playing it through to Queen. Queen and Walker reading it well. Payne harassing Hoadley. Ball finds touch. Ball for Gabriel. Payne flaming hand ball. Free kick almost level with the 18 yard line. Payne three floats over nicely, but straight in the arms of Jackson. Jerry Queen, Terry Payne, Davis, a little too much, yes, Sidman tried just a little bit too much, taking the throw himself back from Shannon, the Saints wasted that opportunity, Fisher pulling it through to Davis, giving it back to him. Dawkins now. And that's right, but it's in a touch. And these closing minutes a bit frenzied to play scrappy now. Both sides trying to snatch a winner rather than throwing signs for the win. Corner. And Terry Payne, Southampton skipper, going over to take this corner himself. there but couldn't get ahead to it and the referee signals a free kick for Crystal Palace 
as we come up to the end of the scheduled 90 minutes into injury time now. Walker shepherding that into touch. Sewell still strolling through it. That's, that's gone. Throw in Southampton. Southampton, who held the champions' leads to a draw in their last home match here at the Dell, looks like dropping a point now to fellow relegation of strugglers, Crystal Palace. A minute of injury time gone as Sydenham takes this one on the right wing. Sydenham, who's been tending to do just a little bit too much or trying to do too much. Payne. Payne with Hoy. And a free kick to Bristol Palace. And there goes the whistle. That's it. So a very valuable point then for Crystal Palace down there at the Dell. And after the break, we look at both those goals in greater detail with slow motion. But also to come on the big match programme, no fewer than 20 more goals. Make sure you stay with us. <laughs> Welcome back, and at this point in the programme, we'd also hope to welcome to the studio the Crystal Palace player, Steve Kemba, but he's not with us for a very good reason. Well, I went to meet him last night at Waterloo Station to ask him to come on the programme, and he said no, and for once I was ready to accept him, though, and I think you will be when you understand the reason. Today, he is running three football matches. He runs three teams on a Sunday, and because of the weather, he's got to spend his time running around in a car, for those who are not on the telephone, getting on the telephone to the players who are, to let them know whether the matches are on or off. And uh, so many people spend a bit of time knocking professional footballers. I don't think that's a bad thing for a 20-year-old to be doing on a Sunday. And uh, that's why I forgive him anyway for not being on the big match. Well done, Steve. In fact, he spent a fair bit of time yesterday, Jim, helping Crystal Palace to a point. He had a splendid game yesterday. And uh, if you remember a few months ago, I think we predicted what an outstanding player he would be in the first division when he was in the second. And uh, I think he's fulfilling that. He's learning every game. They're using him now as a striker to score goals as well as in the middle of the field. And he's an all-round footballer. He's able to do both jobs equally well. And the goal he got yesterday was re very reminiscent of a Greaves-type goal. Yeah, we ought to have a look at that, uh, that first goal again. Here we come now. Yes, it was from a free kick. Interesting to note the technique of this kick from... Uh, Dawkins. Dawkins, yes. It's, uh, he, watch his foot there. It's hooked up in the air. As he floats it, look at that. The toe right up in the air. And you'll see Kemba stealing in here between the centre half. McGrath misses his jump there. And there he is. Watch the technique there. Head back, guided down, punched down into the corner of the goal. And the goalkeeper's no chance whatsoever. A really beautiful goal. And Kemba looking a class player more and more, as you say. But it was a very interesting Southampton goal as well, which uh, we've looked at it several times today. It's got more interesting each time we've looked at it. Yes, I often wonder what ingredients go to make up a goal, what it is. Well, that one was sort of a quick flash from a free quick, just a sudden grab at a goal. But uh, this particular goal of Southampton showed up so many interesting features. The, the, what, the guts of a goal, there was physical challenge, there was skill, there were players who took part in the build-up right from the first throw-in. And I found it a very interesting exercise to look and see how Southampton created that. First of all, from the throw, you'll see the beautiful skill there of Sydenham takes it down with his chest and then flicks it off. And there Jimmy Gabriel comes into it for the first time. There's he's using his backside. Backsides are useful in football, but he gets away with that. Could have been given a foul in other circumstances. Pushed up, takes the flick back from Channon. Now that's Channon who's going out of the picture on your left. Now Gabriel plays it through or out to the wing to Sydenham and you'll see Channon who's alongside him there to the right of Sydenham supporting him. He's trying to make position 
There he is, where am I going to go to help him? There are three Crystal Palace players caught up with it. And then Channon makes the break on the outside as a dummy for the ball to come into the centre of the field. And there Fisher, the other wing half, picks it up. And you can see Gabriel running out of the picture to the left of the screen into the penalty area. Both wing halves up, forcing the game, because remember they were 1-0 down at this point. In the end, the ball comes through, who is it? To Channon again, who's now moved in from the wing, goes to make room for a shot, doesn't do it, and here's where courage comes into it. He blocks that clearance, and it's exactly that that gives Gabriel the chance to use all his skill and experience, and instead of blinding it, carefully guides it up in the air, over the top of Jackson's outstretched hand, who's fractionally far off his line, and there, the makeup of a goal. Really superb team effort by Southampton. Really, there are lessons there, whether you play in a park or whether you play in the first division. But a sad moment for Crystal Palace, but three points out of four now from the last two games. Yes, very encouraging. I think these, uh, these hard, icy grounds, if they continue, I mean, it, it's going to give Alan Hardacre fixture problems. But on the other hand, Crystal Palace's style of game, the enthusiasm they've got, the teamwork that they show, and the courage that they show through all 11 players, is going to earn them a few points. And th through this period, it may well get them to safety. Well, we spoke about the icy pitch there at the Dell. They really had a snowy one at Ipswich yesterday for the visit of West Ham. Really appalling conditions. And in fact, the referee held up play for something like 25 minutes in the first half. We pick it up now after that stoppage. At West Ham are the team wearing the white socks. The pictures come from Anglia Television. The commentator is Jerry Harrison. Nick Mills, Harry Redknapp trying to close him down. Couldn't get there, the flag's up. Billy Bonds with a throw to inside of Trevor Brooking, but uh, Bill John is coming back to help out. Good balance on this uh, tricky conditions from Bill John. This is Collard. Hill. Plenty of room for Hill. Woods is outside him. On the right. Good running by Hill. Taking it just a bit too far, but the flag's gone up. A free kick against Bobby Moore. Which, of course, the uh, crowd love, but not so much Bobby Moore. Bill Baxter up once again. Woods with a free kick. Hill beaten by Stevenson. Now Mills. Oh, it's a great goal! It didn't hit it right, but it's in the net. Now that's what counts. Well, Mick Mills opens the scoring with his third goal of the season. Well, I think West Ham may have been a little uh, disappointed with that free kick decision that cost them, in fact, the match. Uh, I think if referees do play games on those very difficult grounds, they've got to show an awful lot of discretion. Uh, Jim, what did you think about the goal, though? Well, I thought Bobby Moore was rather slow or r rather lax in the way in which he allowed Hill to get on the goal side of him. He didn't seem as if he was determined enough for me at the start of it to make sure that Hill didn't get past him. Watch as he picks up the ball here. Bobby's between him and the goal at this point. But he does, we've seen Charlie Cook do this to Bobby Moore week by week on the big match, pretend to go and then stop. And I still think Bobby's not quite in the right position. But then I think he's unlucky for this to be judged as a foul. It's the same sort of pushing and shoving. He's sliding there into him. Same sort of pushing and shoving we saw in the Southampton match. But the referee in the end does say it is a foul under the circumstances. But I don't think he could stop himself there and he ran into the player because of the conditions and not because of intention. But he accepted it very well. Of course, at this point, nobody knew that a goal was going to come of it. But the goal itself showed West Ham defending well, but unluckily, because they get the ball away. There's a jolly good header to get the ball away, and the players move out quickly, as they should do. But there's a slight deflection there off an Ipswich forward, and it catches Ferguson out completely. No chance to make the save, and it's that one goal that gets two points for Ipswich. So much then for Ipswich and West Ham. Now time for your letters, and we've had plenty concerning that uh, Bobby Charlton free kick against Spurs at Old Trafford last week. Uh, Mr Brewster of Hemel Hempstead writes to say, uh, that uh, it hit the net so hard that he was surprised to see his television still intact. And Mr J.G.C. Turner of Palmer's Green, London N13, said that he and his father rate this as the finest goal from a free kick scored in England uh, since Garincha of Brazil scored one for Brazil against Bulgaria in the 1966 World Cup, way up there in Goodison Park. Let's have a look at both of them and compare them. First, Bobby. Charlton. Well, I would have thought that takes some beating by any standards, but let's have a look at what Garincha can do. Now, we're going to see Pele with the repeat of that first half goal. No, Garincha scored! Oh, what a goal! What a goal! 
Well, which did you think, Bobby Charlton or Garincha of Brazil? Well, certainly in the big match office we get uh, plenty of letters, plenty of postcards, sometimes uh, newspaper cuttings and sometimes little cartoons, like this one from Simon Blyde, aged only 11 from Gravesend. The caption at the bottom reads, Hey, Jimmy, don't you think you should tell the viewers what you mean by the expression, have you got the feeling in your water? Well, that was something that Jimmy uh, mentioned to George Armstrong of Arsenal when we had him on the programme a few weeks ago. What did you mean by that, Jim? Well, Simon, I've got a funny feeling you showed enough wit in your cartoon that you may well have read what I meant by that expression. In case you didn't, just let me say it's the same sort of thing as when you say, I've got a feeling in my bones or I'm a big toe. But may I say how much we enjoyed your sense of humour and your cartoon. Thank you very much indeed. And my feeling is, Jim, that it's well worth looking at in a great deal more detail. You look, for example, across to the left of the cartoon, and there's one of our staff inundated with viewers' letters. I'm sitting there, the ball has just come bursting through that window with David Coleman, our friend, written on it. It's about to hit me on the head. Thank you for that, David. We go a little across to the right, and the studio guest chair is plugged into the uh, electrical circuit. I really can't think it's as bad as, being, uh, as that, uh, being a guest on the big match. Jimmy, in fact, is feeling the water there in the jug. Behind him is the team picture of Coventry City, the team he used to manage. There's a time bomb coming in from the right from uh, Mary Whitehouse, presumably for Jimmy's remarks. There's a Fulham team picture there. There's an end of part one caption. There's uh, a packet of washing powder, one thing and another. It really is a, a beautifully composed little cartoon there from Simon Blyde of Gravesend, who says he's a big match fan, and he finishes off his letter by saying, I would like very much to see Jeff Hurst Patrick in the World Cup final at Wembley in 1966. As a bonus for that, Simon, very good little drawing. We thought you might like to see all five goals from the World Cup final of 66. Oh, and this is Haller. A goal, a goal. <laughs> Styles to Charlton, Bobby Charlton. Bobby Moore. Beckenbauer sticking close to Charlton, and Overath bringing down Moore. It's his second foul inside uh, a minute and a half. Moore chipped, and Hurst, a chance, a goal! It's there! It's there! Alan Moore with the corner for England. Yes. Whistles from the crowd now trying to encourage the Swiss referee to blow his, blow his whistle and stop this game, end this game. Oh! A foul against Jack Sharp. Now, Emmerich. It's there, it's the equaliser, and it's Weber, Wolfgang Weber. Alan Ball. Hurst here now, Hurst, yes! No, they haven't given it. The linesman says no goal. The linesman says no goal. Germans throwing every man into the England box now, trying to find just this one more goal that will force a replay. Bobby Moore, the referee, looking at his watch. The referee looking at his watch. Seconds ticking away as Martin Peters goes for uh, Jeff Hurst goes forward. He might make it three. He has! He has! And that's it! Wonderful Wembley, 1966. By now, surely, you must have spotted my rather silly mistake. Six goals, of course, in the World Cup final. I should have known that. Not five. Mind you, the Germans never really have accepted, have they, that that Jeff Hurst shot that hit the crossbar did, in fact, cross the line. But six goals in the World Cup final. We're going to keep the action going on the big match today by uh, bringing you some action from World Cup qualifying games 
and European Cup games that have been played in the last few days. Remember, of course, that practically every place for, for Mexico next summer has already been filled. First of all, though, the match that took Italy through there, it came against East Germany in Naples, in Naples where Italy have never been beaten. First of all, we should see the striking power of Mazzola by the near post. There he goes. But the next two Italian goals show the supreme skill of Luigi Riva, the man who's valued at 860,000 pounds. In a moment, you'll see a really devastating run from him, almost the length of the field. Here he goes. And he's so aware of things going on around him. At the end of this run, he looks up, so there he goes, sees Dominguini, and Dominguini finishes the run. Next we see Riva the scorer, and it's Dominguini who makes it for him, and a really first-class diving header from Riva, the man who they say will establish himself as a true world star in Mexico next summer. Now look at Riva with the header. Now it's the match in Bucharest that takes Romania through against Greece. And from a corner that's coming up in a moment, you'll see Dambrovsky head the Romanians into the lead, a top, typical Ron Davis type header. And in the second half, the Greeks get level with what you can only describe as a Bobby Charlton type goal from Damosos. So that puts Romania through. Now it's the European Cup. Benfica against Celtic in Lisbon last Wednesday. Celtic in the hoops. And Eusebio. Celtic went there with a 3-0 lead. That's one of them middle of the way. And the next goal that comes is one that I'm sure the Celtic goalkeeper Fallon will remember for quite a while. It'll be scored by Grasso. A nice little one too that he'll play off in a moment. And it goes in off the far post. Should the goalkeeper have saved it? You decide. But it was still 3-2 to Celtic on aggregate. Look at that for a celebration. 3-2 to Celtic on aggregate as the match went into injury time. And now watch Diamantino, the substitute for Benfica. A little header, 3-3, and in fact Celtic have a happy ending because they went through to the next round on the toss of a disc. The last one is Feyenoord for wearing the Arsenal type shirts against the World Club champions Milan in front of 66,000 people in Rotterdam. And we've seen some goalkeepers errors, but watch this one coming up that lets Jansen put Feyenoord ahead after only six minutes. Cudicini in the Inter Milan goal, in the uh, Milan goal. But it was still 1-1 on aggregate, with only eight minutes left. And then Van Hennigen scored this fine-headed goal that puts Feyenoord of Holland into the next round. So some really wonderful action there for you. I hope you enjoyed that from right across Europe. We, in fact, go to the north of England for our last action on the big match today for the match between Liverpool and Arsenal, a game played in very difficult conditions. The commentator, though, is Gerald Sinstat. The pictures come from Granada Television, Liverpool in the dark shirts. Caught. Samuels, straight to Lawler, though. Bobby Graham chasing this, Armstrong going back to challenger. And give away the throw in. Look now for Arsenal. Strong. Barnett has come for this. Gets a fist to it. Robertson to Samuels. Robertson again. Story making the overlap. Radford in the centre. And Graham. This is Samuels. Right out wide to Armstrong. 
Nab come up to make the second man. Lawler keeps very calm and gets a throw in at the end of his efforts. Well played, Chris Lawler. Strong. Evans. George Graham for Arsenal. To Robertson. Samuels takes over. Graham unmarked. McNabb on his left. Away by Hughes, but only as far as Armstrong. Tried to hit the one that bounced. George Armstrong. Armstrong to Graham. And McNabb working the left touchline again. And he's round strong. Two men, three men waiting at the back of the box. There it is, number one from Tottenham Robertson. Jimmy Robertson, the scorer. Beautifully judged cross. Bradford. George Graham going through the middle. And Strong forced to give away the corner. He didn't dare let it run for Tommy Lawrence. Jeff Strong playing against his old club. Been now five years with Liverpool. As Robertson shapes to take this corner, nobody in the six-yard area for Arsenal. Samuels! Headed away by Wall. Radford. Strong for Liverpool. Taking his time, wanting to use the ball, but not finding a colleague when he does eventually part with it. McNabb. Radford. Graham, Lawler, Callahan, do square of him. Peter Thompson on the right touch line. This is Thompson. Good cross. Evans! Hunt! Barnett stops it. Roger Hunt really thought he was in then. Liverpool's first corner. Barnett keeps it in. Evans with him. Armstrong. Simpson. Tripped by, by Evans. Evans apologising. Considering how difficult it is for the players to keep their balance, it's been a game very happily free of accidental collisions and there really have been very few fouls. Yates, a powerful header, caught back in. Strong. Lawler. Thompson, well done. Hunt, look to it. Thompson again. And again he chips it over for Hunt. Callahan. Callahan trying from all of 25, 30 yards there and only a couple of feet over the bar. The second half was a long defensive battle for Arsenal. Robertson. Bradford and Robertson again. No beat to it by Yates. Gates has really played very well for Liverpool today. Very solid. Hunt to Bobby Graham. Chance now for a quick Liverpool break. Too high. Graham over anxious to take full advantage of one of the rare opportunities.
strong. Hunt, Graham. Bobby Graham going to try one. Fires it wide. Difficult to say that he would have been better advised to pass then, but clearly anxious to atone for his previous effort. It was too strong. Jeff Barnett with the goal kick. Liverpool throw. Evans fouled by McClintock. Free kick. Hughes in a good position. Hunt going in. Headed away for a corner by Bob McNabb. McNabb who's played a really storming game for Arsenal. Thoroughly secure in defence. The maker of their goal. Thompson with the corner. Yates at the back of the penalty area. Well caught by Barnett. making a good pass out of a not very good one Thompson Thompson taking on Story Story quick to get back and it means that Thompson's got to try and beat him again and as he does so Court comes in to make the second challenge perfect covering by Arsenal but pulled back for an infringement a foul on Thompson held as he tried to wriggle round Story Mr Smith the referee right on the spot Yates is up there, and Lawler. Nobody can get ahead to it for Liverpool. Wall. Wall are now virtually a permanent extra forward. Hunt! Tried to hit it on the run. Roger Hunt. Thompson, four forwards breaking. Hughes got up on Thompson's left, through to Evans, and away by George Graham for Arsenal. First touch of the ball for Ian St John. Yates, Hunt head down and chasing. Well blocked by Simpson. How well Peter Simpson has policed Roger Hunt all through this game. Ian Callaghan taking a corner. Fifth corner for Liverpool. Waller is up there. So is Yates. Headed away again by Simpson. Thompson picking up. Much too hard. Telltale signs beginning to appear of Liverpool's eagerness now to break down this defence, the constant frustration forcing Liverpool into error. And away goes Robertson now. Graham with him. Tommy Lawrence coming up. Evelyn Hughes. Evans chasing this. Two men with him. And it's Simpson who gets it back to Barney. Lawler. Simpson again in the air. But now St. John. Still on balance and still got the ball under control. Hughes. Roger Hunt. Callahan. infringement 
was when he ran round onto the penalty spot. I thought that Evelyn Hughes had been held down as he tried to jump for that. I thought perhaps Mr. Smith had given a penalty. George Graham, Armstrong, McNabb. Samuels out into touch. St. John. Wall out on the left. Hughes. Hunt. Five men in the middle. Hughes. St. John. held on well a 1-0 victory over Danfield that can't be too bad uh, in fact I thought there was a lot of character in that Arsenal uh, victory they gave so very little away Jimmy well they've three uh, what I would consider top-class international defenders uh, Simpson uh, Bob McNabb and Peter Storey they really are outstanding players and you know, around them there are not mugs and Barnett had a very good game yesterday but I think that now that Arsenal began to find themselves again I think they'll be just as difficult to score against as they were in the past. But it was, of course, uh, McNabb with a brilliant run who not only defended so well throughout the game, and I hope Alf Ramsey gets a look at this because I know Bob's been a bit nervous when he's played for England, not done justice to himself. But look at this lovely run up the wing here. Typical Arsenal move that with an overlapping fullback moving into the space. There's McNabb comes for it, and he evades... Strong, the ex-Arsenal player, who comes in at rather a bad angle at him there. He hurdles him very well indeed. And you see how the conditions there, how far Strong has to run on before he can turn and make chase. And there's McNabb. Time to pick his spot, and he really does cross this ball beautifully. For Robertson, who you'll see, again, typical modern Arsenal, rushing in on the far post into that six-yard box. It's a point we've made before. He doesn't quite make the six-yard box, but a half volley gives the goal. You don't see it go in the net, unfortunately. So there we are, a goal that I hope made Arsenal fans at any rate feel just a little bit warmer this weekend. But certainly we've had goals and excitement in plenty on the big match today. That is all from the programme today. I can only hope that the weather is a little kinder for all of us uh, watching and playing next weekend. And I hope above all that you'll join us for the big match at 3.15 next Sunday. Now from all of us, goodbye. <laughs>